So that means that you're making a bond between those two atoms. And then you're taking the electrons from the CH bond and putting them here. So what that means is that I'm actually gonna make a double bond here. All right, and I'm losing bromine. Follow me? Yes. Yeah, what type of reaction is that? Where I lose a group and make a pi bond? And it's not elimination, it's not addition. You said it's not elimination? Um, wait. That's the definition. It's loss of a group, formation of a pi bond, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we lost a group. We made a pi bond. Uh-oh. Doesn't look like that, though. It looks like the Amazon uh, symbol. All right, one, two, three, four, five, yeah. So is that plus water plus ER minus. Right? Okay. So can I write it H2O or is it that different? Yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. I just wrote it like that. This this I have it. But yeah, write H2O by all means. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions before we start? It's chilly in here, so I put my hoodie on. It's nice out here though. This is this is a great day. All right, let's 17 people. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh where do we stop? We did two reactions up here, I think. Yep. So I want to go through a couple more of these reactions and with the um, going through the thermodynamic part and calculating delta H and all that. Uh, well, I need to download, I need to open that uh, on strength document. Unless somebody else already has it. You can just, we can, you can be our bond strength person. All right, let's do um, let's do the second reaction. All right, find a nuclear file, find an electrophile. <laughs> we're gonna calculate delta H, and we're gonna also determine whether KEQ is uh, greater than or greater than one or less than one. All right, and it said, oh, we also gotta put the arrows in. So in the second example, which one of these is my uh, nuclear file? All right, this is neutral, so it's not gonna be that. C triple bond in. Yeah, it's gonna be this, which we call a it's called a nitrile. Right? See how that carbon has a long pair and a negative charge? Your nucleophile, if it's negative, it's gonna be much more reactive. Like nucleophiles can be negative or neutral, but a negative nucleophile is always more reactive. So this is my nucleophile. I keep trying to write with that highlight. This is my electrophile. What part of the electrophile is going to get attacked? The bromine. Look at, okay, think about it. Let's think about that. The nucleophile is donating electrons. Bromine has three long pairs. Does it, you think it wants more electrons? No. No. So when we think about the electrophile, <laughs> the electrophile <clears throat> this is how I want you to think about it. If you find a bond that's polarized, right? We're gonna put, let's put a dipole in here. The partial positive part of, of the electrophile, remember the electrophile is a lover of electrons. So you wanna give it electrons, but the atom has to be able to 
except electrons. So it's got to have a either a partial positive or a full positive. So in an electrophile, you always look for the, the polarized bond and then find which atom in that bond is partially positive. That's how you know where to attack. So this carbon is going to attack here. And then bromine is going to leave. Does that make sense? Can you explain it one more time? So if that's the electrophile, the site, there's a site in the electrophile that's going to be considered what we what I like to call the electrophilic site. Right? It's the partial positive or it could be fully positive, right? There's, a, there's always a site in that electrophile that's in a polarized bond that's gonna be the partially, partially positive or fully positive. That's where your nucleophile is gonna attack, right? It's not gonna attack an atom that already has a boatload of electrons, right? And if you look at the product that's given, you can see that there's a new bond here between uh, these two carbons. I have to put a plus sign in here. Are y'all following it? What type of reaction is that? Where my nucleophile came in and displaced from me. Which is a leaving, which is the leaving group in this case. What kind, what type of uh, reaction is, is that? Is it a substitution? It is, right? It's a swap, right? The the, the nitrile came in and swapped out with bromine, so it is a substitution. All right, we said this was addition. Now let's go to the, the thermodynamic part. It says calculate delta H and determine if it's exothermic or endothermic, and then determine what KEQ is if it's greater than one or less than one. <clears throat> so how do we calculate delta H again? <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, bonds broken minus bonds uh, formed. Right, great. So which bond did we break? What did we break over here? Is it the bond between H3C and bromine? Yes, the carbon bromine bond got broken. So we broke uh, CBR and then we made A CC bone. Can y'all see that? So this arrow going from this carbon right here, attacking this carbon, that means that I'm making a bond between those two. Right? That's the whole purpose of sharing electrons. All right. So let's look at the chart. Somebody Anybody got the chart pulled up? Yes. What is the value, the bond strength value for a carbon bromine bond? 285. 285. And this is in kilojoules per mole. I'm gonna have to shrink that down. And then what about a carbon-carbon bond? 347. 347 kilojoules per mole. So it's going to be 285 minus 347. What is that? 62. Is that right? Yes. So minus negative 62 
kilo joules per mole. That, that matters, right? Negative, whether that number is negative or positive is going to determine all the other information that we glean from this, right? So if delta H is negative, is this reaction endo or exothermic? So. Exothermic, good. If it's exothermic, what is uh, delta G not, right? The free energy, is that negative or positive? Negative. It's negative because it's going to match up with delta H. Uh, what about the activation energy? Low or high? Low. Low activation energy. So it's going to be a spontaneous reaction. And what about KEQ? Is it greater than one or less than one? is greater than one. Anytime a reaction is exothermic, there's gonna be more products formed than reactants left over. So KEQ is always gonna be greater than one in that case. Beside negative delta G, what is that um, little star? Oh, it's, a, it's actually a prime symbol, sorry. It's a circle, like a degree sign. Oh, thank you. Yeah, sorry about that. <clears throat> So once we figure out what delta H is, we can extrapolate the rest of the information. Whether it's exoendothermic, what delta G is, what uh, the activation energy is. We don't know the, the precise numbers, but we can approximate what, the, what those values are, right? All right, let's do, we already did the second one down below. Uh, let's do this one right here. Where is my nucleophile? Where is my electrophile? Is your nucleophile? Yeah, I was going to say that one. Yeah, it is. I know it's tempting. When you see those long pairs on chlorine for it to be, for you to think that that's a nucleophile, but let me give you a, a, a rule of thumb. I was actually just talking about this in my nine o'clock class. As, as far as nucleophiles are concerned, there's a periodic trend that you can look at. It's decreasing nucleophilicity from left to right, and also from top to bottom. So we, if you see nitrogen and chlorine, if, you want, if you're trying to pick between them, you know, whichever one of those is the furthest to the right, it's gonna be a worse nucleophile, right? So the trend is decreasing nucleophilicity from left to right and from top to bottom. The only time that changes is if you're in a different type of solvent, but that's beyond the scope of today's discussion. So I'm not going to, we're not going to get into that. Uh, so that's my nucleophile. That makes this my, by default, my electrophile. All right. And where's my polarized bond that the nucleophile is going to attack? The H3C. Okay, so is this, you saying over here, is that polarized though? Does that have a partial positive charge on it? It's connected to another carbon. So there's no polarity, that's a non-polar bond. You always look for a polarized bond and the most polar, polarized bond in here is gonna be this one, the carbon okay. bond. And this is gonna be partially positive and that's partially negative. So that's how you know where your nucleophile is gonna attack. Find the polarized bond Look for where the dipole is and attack the positive part of it. All right. So when this comes in, it's coming here. I know that arrow looks all funky, but 
So it's going to attack here like so, and then break the, you're going to lose the chlorine. So break the carbon chlorine part. Anybody not seeing that? So you always attack the partial positive or the full positive in your electrophile. All right. You can look at the products and see what, how, what, what happened, but then you can go back and put the arrows in to show how it happened. All right, so what did we make? Bonds made, well, bonds broken, because we need to calculate delta H. We broke what? We can just look at that part. What did we break? Carbon chlorine bond. All right. So let's put that in over here. And we made, can you see that? We made a carbon nitrogen bond. Is that right? All right. What what are the what's the value for a carbon chlorine bond, the bond strength value? Three thirty nine. Three thirty nine. Is that right? And what about the carbon nitrogen bond? Three hundred five. So we're going to subtract those bonds broken minus bonds formed plus thirty four. Is that right? So is this positive delta H, what does that mean for the uh, thermodynamic portion? Is it exo or endothermic? Endothermic? It's endothermic. Anytime delta H is positive, it's endothermic. That means that delta G not Come on, Russell. It's also going to be positive. It means that the activation energy is higher, or I'm going to put er, <laughs> higher, right? Because it's an endothermic reaction. That means that the, the curve is the, the starting materials are lower in energy than the products. So it's going to take a lot of energy to get to the transition state. And then as uh, from the transition state to the product, the energy difference is much lower, which follows the Hammond posture, right? That we talked about the other day. So if it's an endothermic reaction, the transition state and the products are going to be, are going to look similar. If it's exothermic, the start materials and the transition state are going to look similar. All right, so delta G uh, double dagger, which is the activation energy, is going to be higher. Uh, what else? What about KEQ? Equilibrium constant. If it's endothermic, that means that there are more reactants left than products. So if you think about KEQ and the, it's the products over reactants, if, that, if the R number is larger than the P number, is that going to be less than one or greater than one? If I put five over 50, is that going to be a fraction or is it going to be a whole number? A fraction. It's a fraction, right? One tenth. So that's going to be less than one. Anytime delta H is positive, the equilibrium constant is going to be less than one because there's going to be more reactants left than products. All right. Any questions about that? About that one? Let me move that up soon. Um, what type of a reaction is it? Ooh, good question. 
What type of reaction is it? The nitrogen came in and swapped out with the chlorine. So is it another substitution? It's a substitution, that's right. It's not going to. No, I don't worry about it. But... All right, let's look at the bottom reaction. And then what I would like to do is, let's go to another part to that. I want to kind of turn you loose on, actually we're going to skip the bottom reaction because it's, it's on here twice, it's down here. Let's go to this page. And I want to turn you loose on a couple of these uh, just for about 10 minutes. We'll do these two right here. Uh, but let's let's look at the top reaction. All right, you have um, an aldehyde, and then you have a carbon nucleophile. So this is my nucleophile. This is my electrophile. My polarized bond is right here. Right, so where's that nucleophile going to attack? The, the carbon or the oxygen? Carbon. The carbon. Carbon. Anytime you have a carbonyl, the carbonyl carbon is always going to be electrophilic. Right, it's a great acceptor because of that huge dipole between carbon and oxygen. So this is coming here like so. I'm going to break the CO pi bond. Right, that's how I'm going to get to here. So I broke. a CO pi bond, which is really like a power energy bond. And then I made a carbon-carbon sigma bond. Wasn't a CO pi bond like 741? Yes. Yeah, 741. And then carbon-carbon, uh, we just did, I think. When it three, what is it? Three what? Seven. Well, it's 427. Is that right? 347. 347. So you can subtract those. Let me see. So three what? I got 394. Yeah, 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 that's right. 394 kilojoules, positive 394, right? Is delta H. Hugely, hugely endothermic, right? Normally a reaction like this, uh, you have to use some type of catalyst to, to get it to go, unless you have a really, really, Excellent electrophile, you got to use a catalyst because these, these uh, that's that's a huge barrier to overcome. Uh, so delta H is plus 394 kilojoules per mole. Right. And what does that mean for KEQ? Less than one or greater than one. Less. Less than one. Good. But the, the uh, delta H is positive, so it's going to be less than one. And then is the activation energy going to be super high? Yes. That's a big number for delta H. And then uh, Gibbs free is also going to be positive. All right. I'm going to turn, I'm going I'm to break y'all out for a second. We got a lot of time left too. So I want to break y'all out into groups. Uh, on the lab, on these two problems I have highlighted. Does everybody have this handout? Or at least a, a screenshot of what's, what's shown? Yes. All right. Let me break y'all out into groups. I want y'all to work on those two. Same thing. These, don't, you don't have to worry about identifying a nucleophile or an electrophile. Uh, 
I want you to put the arrows in though. And I want you to do the thermodynamic part, uh, figuring out what Delta H is, what, uh, and then using that to extrapolate the other data. So let me break y'all out. Wait, um, what type of reaction was the last one? Tell me. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, tell me. Wait up. It's an addition. That's right. We we started with uh, a pi bond and we add, we added a nucleophile to it. So it's an addition. We got twenty four people. I'm gonna do four breakout rooms. Attendance has been waiting. All right. So let me open the rooms up and then. I want y'all to work through these two problems. I'm gonna give you 10 minutes and then you can come back and we'll have, if we have time, we'll let one person from each group discuss it. Or give me something about it. All right, so 10 minutes starting now. So go ahead and join if you haven't joined. Right. Um, can I get someone to tell me what arrows you put into this example right here, a top example? What did you What did you do? And what type of reaction is that? I was kind of confused because okay. I felt like the hydrogen went over and attached itself to that oxygen right okay it did but, but i was and so i felt like that was the bond formed yeah but I, I couldn't figure out where the bond like what the bond broken was so for this example there was no bonds broken okay so, so would, put zero put a zero in for that okay and then you would just subtract it like that and then that's yep. how you would get your Delta yep. H. So okay. BB okay. minus BL. What about the arrow? Is because you said the hydrogen went and attached itself, or did the oxygen attack it? Oh. Right, it's, it's H plus, so it doesn't have any electrons, so it's going to get attacked. Okay, uh, okay. Right. So bond, yeah. bonds broken in this case is zero. Bonds form. It's an OH bond. What is that? Is that like four seventy one? It's 400 and something, I think. 464. 464, yep. So that's negative 464. All right, somebody tell me what the, uh, yeah, tell me the rest of the information, somebody who was working on this in the breakout room. What is delta G not? Is it positive or negative? Negative. Negative. Good. All right. What about somebody tell me what about the activation energy? Oh. Okay, good. It's increased. Uh no. Decreased. Did you say low? Yeah. All right. You you kind of I can't hardly hear you, but we got it. All right. What about somebody tell me about the equilibrium constant? KEQ is greater than one. Good, greater than one. All right, is it exo or endothermic? Exothermic. Exo. Good. 
Right. What about the second reaction? What happened? Somebody tell me what happened going from the intermediate that's on the left to the uh, what we got on the right. Add your air from the um, bond between the oxygen and the carbon to the right here. oxygen. Yeah. All right. Good. That's exactly right. All right. Uh, so we have bonds broken, which is a carbon oxygen bond. Is that right? Yes. What well, what's the value? Didn't we just do a CO bond somewhere? It's it was like three sixty. Three hundred and sixty, I think. All right, and then bonds form. We didn't make any bonds, right? So that's zero. So delta H is gonna be what plus three sixty. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right, so the activation energy, Gibbs, and KEQ are what? Activation energy, is, is it going to be, somebody tell me. It's going to be high. High activation energy, right? Because it's endo, uh, I gave that part away. It's endothermic. Delta G is also going to be positive and KEQ. Less than one. Less than one. Good. Exothermic, endothermic. All right. If this is positive, what is that telling us about whether it's exo or endothermic? If it's positive, it's endothermic. Endothermic, good. All right, I want you, I'm gonna assign these for you to work on your own. Don't panic. Look at what's happening. You have the products over here. So just use some logic and, and, and look at what you have over here and come up with a way, a mechanism that'll get you from a to B. It might look like a lot initially, but it's really not. And I want you to do both of them because they're both connected. All right. On Monday, we're going to start um, radicals. So I'm going to send you, <clears throat> well, first I got to get all this stuff cobbled together from, because I forgot to, didn't get a chance to put stuff on YouTube on Wednesday. So I'll put it back on, I put all this stuff on YouTube today from Wednesday and today, and the notes I'll upload from Wednesday and today. And then I'm gonna send you some videos over the weekend dealing with radicals, because that's what we're gonna start on Monday. We're not gonna spend a lot of time on it. We'll just spend one class period talking about it, and then we're gonna move on to another topic uh, in preparation for the next test, which is gonna be this coming Friday. Not today, next Friday. All right, Qu any questions about anything? I have two questions. Come on. Okay. Uh, one, um, I'm still not understanding why either the KQ 